Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. And I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels, we did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", 6'4", to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strength. Here at Always 100, we have different things that we provide each week with our elite training, working on things that can help them get a scholarship in the future if they don't have one right now. Watch the skill development, helping kids get better, understanding what it takes to get to the next level. Catching and shooting, working on ball handling. In the last five years, we had over 200 kids just able to play basketball at some places from the NAIA, Division Three, Division Two, or Division One level.
kids grow up quick, and there's a lot to teach them. Some lessons they won't pick up in school. Some they'll learn the hard way. But when it's time to give them the keys to their finances, we'll be there to help with their first checking account and the tools they need to make sense of their money. And even though they're off on their own, you'll be able to check in to see how they're doing. Raising your children is important, and teaching them about money is a big deal. So ProFed makes it easy. Federally insured by the NCUA, Equal Housing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in, Indiana High School football fans. SummitCitySports.com coming to you live. Shields Field for the kickoff, the much-anticipated 2022 season here in the Summit Athletic Conference. And, of course, we're starting it off with the last time for these two uh, to open up the SAC season as they'll move to a small big school next uh, next year with the two, first two weeks being out of conference matchups. We will see how that pans out. But this matchup right here is one to watch for. Uh, my game of the week. A lot of people watching that Snyder at Northside matchup, which is uh, got some outstanding talent in its own right. But this one right here at Shields Field, this Bishop Dwinger crowd is pretty much packed. This near side is starting to fill up more and more as we get closer to game time. Wayne across the way. As this is SummitCitySports.com, we are live at six, count them, six games here this Friday evening. You can follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. You'll be notified of all our live events as they do happen. So as I mentioned, these two squads have opened up against each other for the past several years, and this will be the last year of that, no doubt about it. This is the second year, or excuse me, the third year for head coach Sherwood Haydock for the Wayne Generals in this reclamation project. He has done nothing but produced and doubled his wins uh, since he has got here to, uh, to Wayne High School. Uh, watch, of course, Lamarion Nelson, the second leading rusher in the area last year behind Laban Davis of Eastside, the dual threat. Uh, but he was second in the area was Lamarian Nelson, 287 carries, 1671 yards, 16, uh, 1671 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's extremely sure-handed with the football as well, does not fumble the ball a lot at all. He is a tremendous running back and so, so hard to handle for opposing defenses with his size, his strength, and his speed. Now they do have to replace a ton of players uh, from last year. Uh, Avant Rogers being uh, uh, being a big cog for that Wayne defense uh, that is missing now here for head coach Sherwood Haydock. They're going to have to get it going as they would have to slow down the transfer from Northrop. That's C.J. Davis from Northrop. Transfer over to here to, Nor to Dwanger from Northrop as a lockdown athlete is committed to Marshall. He's ranked number 22 in the state of Indiana in his class. He's a tremendous talent here for Bishop Dwanger is going to need here in the 2022 season as they have graduated a ton of players from a year ago. Looking back at Wayne, though, as you're going to see an outstanding back in Lamarion Nelson, as I mentioned. That quarterback will be Christian Trimble. It does look like they're going to open it up a little bit more this year, primarily an option and a kind of a running tee type of game the past two seasons. Uh, so they are... Uh, uh, supposedly going to open it up a little bit more, looking out wide for the junior, Keyshawn Tolls, who's an outstanding prospect, very good size. Uh, in the slot there is Jacob Sharon. He's a sophomore. The other wide out there is Deontay Williams, also a junior, to go along with Trimble and Nelson in the backfield, who are seniors, as Bishop Doinger is taking the field uh, right now. 
in, but that quarterback slot is one that we got to watch here for the Wayne Generals with the Font Rogers. Not here anymore. They're going to have to get some pressure on the offense of Bishop Dwenger uh, with Nehemiah Young up front. Just an absolute beast to handle along with Jordan Fultz, Kalon Kelsaw. Uh, watch for those guys to try to get to the quarterback in Sam Campbell. Speaking of quarterback in Sam Campbell, that was the question in the offseason in the summer was who is going to be the quarterback in the 2022 season for the Bishop Dwenger Saints. And it is going to be Sam Campbell. So that takes him off the defensive side, one of the best cornerbacks for head coach Jason Carrot. Over the past uh, two years, over the past two years, and he is a tremendous player, but you need him at quarterback. You need him back there in the backfield to actually give you some repetition. Who's got some experience, does Sam Campbell in at the quarterback position. Uh, but going along with him, it's not going to be just him. And it is going to be a lot more intriguing than we thought coming in. And it all comes with the transfer of C.J. Davis and the progression of Carter Minix. Carter Minix is a tremendous prospect in the junior class. Returner, watch him and C.J. Davis, both back on a punt and on the kickoff. Dangerous, absolutely dangerous material. Teddy Steele in the backfield, of course, the speedster that can really break it. Uh, Stellan Rustin brings really good size at your tight end. Uh, so watch for the offense for Bishop Dwinger to really impress and to tease some people out here at Shields Field. We're going to step away here momentarily and send it to our owner, Jeff Mahoney, and the sideline Swami Casey O'Boyle as they give a little pregame thoughts. Well, let's jump into that first game, if you guys okay. don't mind, okay. and break it down a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Wayne at Bishop Dwinger. I love this game. Same. Big fan of this game. Um, Thoughts, Jake? Man, obviously, I'm jumping on the Wayne Generals uh, early bandwagon, and um, or should I say I'm jumping on LaMarion Nelson's back and letting me run. Man, they're... I feel like they're going to get Dwinger in this game. I really do. I think more people are saying that than not. Um, you know... Swami, I don't know where he's at tonight, floating off in the airspace somewhere, but saying Dwinger by Well, well four. we'll get to that at the end. Let's oh, that's not the end. So we're not going to the point spread yet. We're just talking about the yep. game. We're just Come on. Sorry, man. I blew that. You, you know I, I'm going to have to put I, you back over in the pit if you don't behave <laughs> yourself. I got confused, he just, man. He just I, likes I, his pick. I got hey, out of the pit. We'll get to it. He <laughs> likes his pick. Pump he's got a break there, my man. He's got a five star he wants to give out. All right. All right. So. Well, Marion Nelson, <laughs> fantastic. I like Wayne. I think Wayne's it's going to be a great guys game. Back on defense, too. Eight yes. guys, starters back on defense. That's right. I think that's a game that, again, is going to be deciding the trenches. I mm. think that, you know, obviously Nelson's great. You know, Wayne's got a lot of speed. But I think the question in that game is, you know, Wayne has Namaya Young, one of your favorites, Casey. Yeah. But can Dwanger reload and get the trenches going? To me, there's a lot of eye candy in that game. I mean, I love Teddy Steele. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing Campbell at quarterback for Dwayne. C.J. Davis. C.J. Davis. But name. to me, what's going to go on in the trenches in that game? You know, yep. how is Dwanger going to be able to reload in the trenches? And I think that's what you want to watch for in that game. And I think that's going to be so key. And can Dwanger get up to speed and fill those holes in the trenches. Because I think Wayne, this is going to be one of the better teams Wayne has had. And this is typically, Sherwood's known for the rebuilds. And typically about year three is when Sherwood has that rebuild going. So we're right on schedule with the rebuild for, yeah. for Sherwood. Yeah. But I think this is a very intriguing game. And I think, again, 
for a matchup right out the box, this is a big game for both programs. I agree. And Casey, you featured Ethan Fluger here, so you're talking about the trenches. Yes. Look at the guns on this guy right mm-hmm. here. I mean, he looks like he's ready to go for the, the season. Well, he's one of the few returning starters on that side of the ball for the Saints. He's going to have to have a big game. To your point, Joe, I think the Saints defensively, especially in the trenches, have to have some success. They've got to they've got to force Wayne to throw the ball. Wayne's got some some parts. Make no mistake. Yes, they they've do. got some talented yes, receivers. Tolls, uh, uh, Williams. They're, I mean, they're, I think they've got some really dangerous receivers, but I don't think they have the timing yet. I think Wayne's going to be really, really dangerous yes. by the end of the year. And that, and quickly to finish up on that, if you go out and you're going to watch this game or we watch the tape later, that's the matchup that I'm going to really zero in on. The Bishop Dwanger defensive line against the Wayne offensive line. Mm. That's where I believe, Jake, you really want to focus in and watch to see what goes on there. And as a last comment on that, um, you know, I'm into the flash, the offense, you know, putting points Wait, on the you're board. you're into the flash? I, I mean, <laughs> so, some may say. Some may say. Be careful, that guy bite you, Joe. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it's it, being an NE8 guy, it's easy for me to, to get more in tune with the SAC and get – you know, tied up in the glitz and glamour, and, and I'm hyping on the Wayne train. Um, but I know, Casey, you know, you've been around this always reloads, you know, and that's definitely something to take with a grain of salt. Well, and that's one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up before you guys make your picks later on in the show. Sure. Nobody plays more players during the regular season than Coach Jason Garrett does. That's why year in, year out, it's always hard to get Dwanger guys up in the top ten players of the week because sometimes the stats aren't there exactly because they spread it around. So they are always going to have a small army of young men Mm. ready to play ball. And before we close up this game and move on to the next one, to your point, Jeff, in the scrimmage last week, Dwanger played a ton of guys. Mm -hmm. Not that Carroll didn't, but it sure looked like Dwinger emptied their bench a little sooner and because at times Carroll just manhandled the Saints. But I'd take that with a grain of salt, and we'll see. Dwinger, to your point, usually gets better as the year goes on. This is a difficult matchup for the Saints. Make no mistake. There you have it from Around the Fort podcast. Outstanding stuff, gentlemen. This is SummerCitySports.com bringing this live broadcast. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summer City Sports. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. You'll be notified of all our live events as they do happen. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at the Big Eyed Fish. Kelly Automotive celebrating their 70th year in business. 70 years in business. Kelly Automotive Group shop all 14 of their locations at brands at drivekelly.com. Top Seal Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They'll help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics and more. You're invited to join ProFed Credit Union. We get to know you, just better serve you. Sign up in line in five minutes or stop by a branch. Join ProFed today and start owning your financial at profedcu.org. At Ottenware Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind to their prior process from build to bill. Visit OttenwellerContracting.com. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is game time here at Shields Field to kick off the season. Wayne and Dwanger about to go at it. Wayne will receive to start the ball game. And it will be back deep for Wayne to return. Lamarion Nelson. And number 10, Jacob Sharon. It will be Sharon to catch it at the 15-yard line. He cuts it back out near side, goes back towards the center of the field and is swarm tackled by a bunch of Dwanger Saints. And that's where we'll start it with Wayne on offense.
as we have a player injured for the Saints to start the ball game on the kickoff. Absolutely the last thing you want to see. So let's see, I can't see who the player is down. Why we got a chance. As you take a peek, wish I had a number on that. As the staff is down, the athletic training staff is down, taking a look. Let's get our chance in here to finish here. We'll keep it right here, ladies and gentlemen. Up on his feet. Walking off under his own power. I believe that's number 25. If that's number 25, that's Nick Pelkington, the sophomore, who they have extremely high hopes for here on the Bishop Dwinger program in his sophomore year. So here we go. First play from scrimmage. Ball's going to be spotted at the 24-yard line, first and 10 for Wayne. This is Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play. -play. Joe Hacker is on the camera, SummitCitySports.com. They're going to go three wide, so right away, open it up a little bit. Trimble's going to hand to Nelson. Nelson somehow is brought down by the big paw of number 36, Robert Pelkington. That's a good way to start it in the backfield. For Dwenger, as Nelson may have got one. They're going to call it a half yard, if that. They're going to spot it just shy of that 25-yard line. Second and a long nine for the Generals. Three wide receiver set. They're going to flip one to the far side. Twins near. Trimble's going to go under center with Nelson in his backfield. And nothing happening there, but Nelson's going to make something. And he'll gain a yard on the play, but not a good start. for the Wayne Generals as they're looking at third and long on their first possession of the ball game. 11 minutes. As we do play four 12-minute quarters here in the state of Indiana. Three wide receivers set, Trimble in the shotgun. Nelson wasn't set. Trimble's gonna roll out, it's got a man wide open. They're sharing and dropped it. Jacob Sharon, the sophomore speedster that they have so, so high feelings on, just turned the head before he caught the ball. And such a tough, tough job there. So Wayne is going to have to punt on their first possession. That would have been a first down and then some. Well, how about this crowd here on this Dwinger sideline? Sheesh. Trimble. Good kick from Trimble. Minix. This is a game breaker. Carter Minix is going to come back near side. Two to break. And a game or a tackle that saves a touchdown. That's Carter Minix. We've talked about him all summer, folks. He's the Spross prospect in the junior class you're looking at. Tremendous player. So Dwenger's going to start with outstanding field position. On their first drive, the ball will be spotted at the 29-yard line. First and 10 for the Saints. Let's take a look at our traction AP replay. Gardner Minix just has the quick burst and has the vision and the little bounce, the strength. How about the cut right there? Ran it back. And the quarterback, which was the punter, Trimble takes it. They're going to hand off quick to Steele. Steele, this is going to be a score. 29-yard touchdown, Teddy Steele. The first play of scrimmage for the Saints. Count it, 4-6. Just like that for Bishop Dwenger. Woo! How about that? Carter Minnick sets up at first down and, and 10 from the 29 and hand the ball to Teddy Steele on a little misdirection counter. 
and no one even close to the speedster steal. Been rocking the number 33. Now dropped a three and looks even quicker. Happens when you drop a second number. It's science, folks. For the PAT it is up, and that is good from Joseph Moran and Bishop Dwanger. Start it seven zip early in this ball game. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. From ages 5 to 18, our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together, we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditions, dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business, a system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit AndersonCoolHeat.com. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you? Whether it's expunging your criminal record or helping to get your driver's license reinstated, Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Zioka Cleaning and Restoration, providing top-notch commercial cleaning services, including janitorial, water damage, and state-of-the-art disinfectant services throughout Northeast Indiana. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf. Edu. So back to the action as Wayne will take their second kickoff in a matter of under just two minutes. 10-13 on the clock right now. Back deep, Sharon and Nelson. Moran to boot it. Good kick. Caught at about the same spot at the 14. It's gonna go far side, how about that tackle? That pursuit by number four, Christian Lozado. That's another one in that junior class that they have such high hopes for. It is Lozado, good open field tackle on the kickoff. He's a strong safety as well. Him and Davis back there as safeties. I mean, come on, not fair. CJ Davis committed to Marshall. He'll be with that Thunder and Herd, number 22 ranked prospect in the state of Indiana. He's going to one on one on one here, a little bubble. Here's Sharon. I like this from Coach Haydock. The sophomore made a mistake on play number one on a wide open opportunity to catch the ball and just come back with him a bubble screen, let him touch it, put it in his hands, let him feel the catch. I like that play by the experienced and well, well respected head coach Haydock. Second and eight for the Generals. Again, we're live at six locations around the city and area. As you can check all at summitcitysports.com. They're going to hand Nelson to this near side. They had numbers. Nelson breaks a tackle and then is finally brought down at about the 30 by Davis. Just shy, but that'll move the chains for Nelson and the Generals. Trimble will break it. Three wide receivers set. Lone back is Nelson. Good hole there. And another tackle. We have a flag late. And the clock stopped at 920. That's going to be a hold on the Generals. Uh, and they'll back them up 10 yards from the spot. We'll replay the first down. Going back to that Minix return. I mean, you could put Davis or Minix back there, and you're talking about two of the best returners in the state. It's absolutely insane, the plethora of talent. I did drop a plethora on you. Here comes Trimble. They're going to go trips near side, way off balance here to the left. Nelson in the backfield with Trimble. Another bubble to Sharon. Look at the pursuit here from Dwanger. Good block. How about that block by number three, Keyshawn Tolls. 
And that's what it takes to win. Twins far side. Lone wide. Trimble's going to sin. One cut. Lowers the shoulder. At about one yard gain. That's going to be spotted at the 30. Just under nine minutes. Second and nine. Excuse me. Third and nine. For Wayne. This is ultra important to try to pick up the first here. Do not want let this offense back on the feed, field immediately. Eight and a half minutes left in the quarter. SummitCitySports.com. Trimble low throw and throwing a little bit behind Sharon as well. And the drop sees a little bit. Uh, not a perfect pass. And that would have been about two yards shy of the first down marker. And now Wayne are going to have to punt it once again. Trimble back to punt for Wayne. Minutes back to the Saints. Trimble will punt it. Back deep for the Saints is Carter Minix, who about broke one on the last one on his first touch of his junior year. And that one booted. That's going to go the wrong way. And that's going to be towed out of bounds near side. It's going to be spotted at about the 31-yard line, I believe. Should be right there to the 30-31. And they're going to spot it at the 30-yard line. Concordia up early over South Sykes. Finds a Johnny Washington. Yes, that a Johnny Washington, who's a top player uh, in the city in basketball. How about that? That came off a of recovery on a fumble by Concordia. Here's Campbell in the shotgun. And that was a miss. Campbell, though, will take it. And that was not by design. He handed to the right to no one. Trips near side. Campbell's going to keep it again. Not that time. That's number 52. That's Haline Kelsaw. Seven and a half minutes left. Right up the gut. Not a lot going there, maybe a yard. Fourth down. So 6.50 left, clock rolling. High formation for the Saints. Looking for a first down. They hand it to Steele. Steele breaks another one. Out towards the 10-yard line and tackled right there at the 10. First down for the Saints. First and 10 for the Saints. A ball spotted at the 11. Fumble. Well, Elijah Doe handed it to the official, so <laughs> I don't know. Seven zip. Dwinger up early. 
Second and long for the Saints. Taking a lot of time here, 10 on the play clock. And timeout, I believe, is going to be called by head coach Jason Garrett. He will, and we'll step away here momentarily. We'll be right back. SummitCitySports.com. You're good at basement basketball. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Online, over the phone, or in person. And stop knocking on wood. High school sports fans, welcome back. To game time, to pure spirit, to pure sport. Welcome back to high school sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is game time. This is Indiana high school sports. This is your IHSAA. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. SummitCitySports.com, 546 remaining in this first quarter. Second and 12 for the Saints. Ball's on the 13-yard line. Guy formation for Dwanger. Campbell goes under center. Davis and Minix are your wideouts. I'm not throwing it yet. They're going to low reverse here with Minix. Two players out there for Wayne. Gets back nearly to the line of scrimmage just with sheer athleticism. But a good play there by Wayne. To keep containment. Empty backfield for Campbell. Quarterback draw. There it is. Can't make a miss, and that will bring up fourth down. Outstanding job by the Wayne General defense to force fourth. Decision time now for Jason Garrett, and he's going to go to Joseph Moran for the field goal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. SummitCitySports.com coming to you live. Bishop Dwenger High School, they're up 10-0. Right now over the Wayne Generals, fourth and a long one for Wayne. They're going for it just out of the timeout. It will be Nelson. He was not touched until after the line of scrimmage. Outstanding blocking by the Wayne General offensive line. And now they want to go a little hurry up. 2.15 on the clock. They're going to bunch it up again. Hat to hat right here. One wide receiver set. Trimble hands to Nelson. Nelson maybe a yard. Yard and a half. Pelkington on the stop. Second and about eight and a half for the, for the Generals. One wide receiver set. He's near side and Deontay Williams. He's not had a touch yet. You got two lead blockers in Young and Rockford. Rochford, excuse me. Trimble, one-on-one. -on -one. Here it is. Man-to-man -man and cannot. Good man-to-man -man defense by number 21, Brady O'Keefe, the sophomore, stepping up. As that was a nice throw from Trimble. Just could not make the catch. Good Deontay Williams. He's got good size, 6'3", 175-er. Minute and a half. Trips near side. Here's another roll. Does avoid the tackler. Throws it deep into a bunch. Oh, that's it. That's the skills right there, folks. You can't throw it up. 
with number seven, C.J. Davis lurking. That kid's an interception machine. Wow. Nicely done, C.J. Davis. And the Saints will take over deep in their own end, but Wayne drives, gonna be jarred shut. Campbell will lead his Saint offense onto the field. Minute 25 on the clock, first and 10 from the 12. Three wide receiver set for the Saints. Campbell in the shotgun. Has Trent Titman on his right side. The big, big fella. Just another blocker. Uh-oh. This is dangerous. He's going to take this. Uh-oh. He could take it the distance. Over to the 50. C.J. Davis off to the interception. Will take it to the house from 78 yards out for the score. Dwangers rolling. C.J. Davis, the transfer from Northrop, shows you exactly why. He is committed to Marshall to play D1. He is a returner, a wide receiver, a DB, a safety, you name it. C.J. Davis can do it. Watch his catch. He gets the block right there he needed. And off to the races goes C.J. Davis. Outstanding player. Brandon with a point after. 16 zip, 112 left in the quarter. Dwanger putting all doubters to sleep right now here in the quarter to start this Summit Athletic Conference ball game. Oh, what a statement. Here's Moran. Moran. And that's going to be a defensive offsides, I believe. Yep, it will be half the distance. Moran, as they just declined it, let's go ahead and kick it. Moran to make it 17-0. Owen Zimmerman on the hold. Great catch by the holder, Zimmerman, and we got a flag thrown in the defensive backfield. And yeah, that's going to be on Wayne. That will be declined, but peep the skills and speed of C.J. Davis. You get him in space. Just a little X route. He comes underneath. And no one going to catch C.J. Davis. He is a game breaker here for the Saints as they take a 17-0 lead over the Generals. Personal foul will be assessed on the kicker. That is a personal foul on Wayne for going over to the center, I believe. What a start from the Saints. I just realized I never got that Wayne timeout. Let me pull that up right now. Two timeouts left apiece. Eli Maddox found a Johnny Washington for another touchdown score. Concordia rolling right now against Southside. End of the quarter between Carroll and Lures. That's tied at zeros. Seventeen zero Wayne. It's gonna need an answer right here, right now. With 112 left in the first quarter, Dwanger absolutely burning them as Moran will line up for the kick. Back deep. 
is Nelson and Moran and uh, Jacob Sharon. They're going to flip flop sides of the field now. They've kicked it near side to this near hash at about the 14, 15 yard line, both kickoffs. Let's see what they do on the third here with Moran. And he's going to boot that in the back of the end zone with that 15 yard penalty. Wayne will take over first and 10. Dwenger and their defenses look good have had some open plays has Wayne just has not been able to take advantage of it One twelve left you know no Sean Collins which has been a game breaker for Wayne over the past couple of years with his tremendous speed not here with Graduation. So Trimble will go under center. Twin wide receiver set to the far side. And we got a flag. So you have a delay of game on Wayne. Delay of game on the general. As the officials, the white hat and the referee talking about it. And they're going to wave it off. So that the clock, the play clock must not have reset properly. So the officials talked about it and they will now reset it. And no delay a game for Wayne. So Trimble under center. Has Nelson in the backfield. Twins to the far side. Hands Nelson's got some blockers and Young. And a nice little four or five yard gainer for Nelson. We'll bring up second and six. Just under a minute, clock rolling. Kind of a long first quarter. Nearing 36, 37 minutes. Twins near side this time. Nelson makes a first, makes a second miss. How about a third miss? Still moving and it's tackled at the 40. Nelson is really good. First down, general. First and 10 for Wayne. It's a big first down, picked up by Nelson. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Bishop Dwenger right now punching Wayne in the mouth. They take a 17-0 lead. To go into the second quarter, we'll be right back. You're watching Indiana High School football right here from SummitCitySports.com. Your kids grow up quick, and there's a lot to teach them. Some lessons they won't pick up in school. Some they'll learn the hard way. But when it's time to give them the keys to their finances, we'll be there to help with their first checking account and the tools they need to make sense of their money. And even though they're off on their own, you'll be able to check in to see how they're doing. Raising your children is important and teaching them about money is a big deal. So ProFed makes it easy. Federally insured by the NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. I was once a Southside kid who was led on a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, SummitCitySports.com. Coming to you live, Bishop Dwenger High School Shields Field. Dwenger up 17-0 right now, now over Wayne. 
really putting it to the Generals. But an outstanding game break by C.J. Davis on that 78-yard pitch and catch from Campbell. Had Carter Minix with a beautiful return to open the game off the punt, the first punt from Wayne. That was followed by a Teddy Steele one-play touchdown run. Now here comes Wayne. They flip-flop side, second quarter. Comes near side. Nelson, good blocking right there. Makes a nice cut. Is bullying his way over the 50-yard line and is finally tackled at the 47. Twins near side. Looks like Wayne has found something here in this twin set with the lead block, kind of as an H-back. Here's Nelson again. Lost his footing as he went to cut it, but will gain a yard. Nelson on the carry, brought down by Dows. Eleven and a half minutes left in this second quarter. So Cordia. Was up a couple scores over Dwenger. Or excuse me, over Southside. Right here, Dwenger up 17-0. Over Wayne. Snyder up 7-0 over Northside. That's about into the second. Excuse me, into about the second quarter. Reverse. Sharon. Can he make a man miss? Minix is out there. And gets a little bit of the edge, is pushed out of bounds, about three yard, yards shy. That'll be about a six yard gainer. Third and a, it looks like two yards for Wayne. And that's going to be a first down by the Generals. Nelson on the carry brought down by Trailer Ware and Covington. So they'll move the chains. Will Wayne. New Haven up 14 0 over Marion. That game is live as well. New Haven, of course, a top 100 player in the country. And Mylon Graham has been offered by Alabama. Twin set, near side. Trimble, bad spacing, but he got it to Nelson, and Nelson will keep churning it, and he'll go inside the 30-yard line. Second and three for the Generals. 10 minutes, we're nearing. <laughs> 20 still on the play clock, plenty of time. Lures up 3-0 on a 28-yard field goal. They're up over Lures. Hands it to the up man and is met in the hole. Did he get to the line of scrimmage? He did. But how about Dwenger meeting him right in the hole? As that was number four on the rush, Caden Rochford. Cherubusco in Columbia City tied up at sevens. Nine minutes. Twin wide receiver set near side. That's Young as the H back. Nelson in the backfield. Trimble under center. He's going to take the handoff over the right side. Lowers his shoulder. And that's going to be another first down for Wayne. And the Marion Nelson right now having their way the with the Dwenger D. Pelkington on the stop again. Uh, 
That's going to be minimal. Second and nine, eight fifteen remaining in the second quarter. Off the edge, couldn't get to Nelson. That was AJ Lay. But he's starting to time that snap. Wayne's gonna have to mix that up a little bit. There's a whistle down on the field. I think somebody's injured. Uh, I think there's blood on number four, Christian Lozado. The umpire was scanning the whole defense, looking for a scratch. They found it, Lozado, he's got to come out on a big third down and seven for his Saints D. Ryan Groves, the sophomore, is going to check in. No, he's not. Lozado back in. How about the, the quickness of the training staff for the Saints? How about that. And another whistle. Timeout called by Dwenger. Timeout was called by Dwenger. Did not like the way the defense was locked and loaded, so we're going to step away for their break right here live at Summit City Sports. .com. I'm Matt Wolford, president of the IHSAA Foundation, and we need your help. We need your help so the youth of our community can develop advanced leadership skills. We need your help giving high school administrators and coaches the instruction and insight they need to be better role models and teachers. To learn more or to make a tax-deductible contribution, go to IHSAAFoundation.org. You'll not only be contributing to the foundation of the IHSAA, you'll be contributing to the foundation of our community. This is your IHSAA. This is your state. This is your high school. This is your athletic association. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and we're here to make sure that all of this remains yours. This is your state. This is your community. This is your IHSAA. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 7.39 left in this second quarter. Bishop Dwenger up 17-0. Wayne with possession. They have the ball at the 15-yard line. It is third and seven. I'm sure this is going to be four-down territory. Twenty-five still on the play clock. They haven't even started running it yet. Here comes the whistle. So just under 740 left in the quarter. Trimble's going to go under center. Nelson in the backfield again. Wide receivers are split out. Fakes to Nelson. Trimble threw it against the grain. Trimble right there had the edge. Should have just taken it and ran it towards the first down marker. And I think that's what Coach Haydock's upset about. Not only that, he had a little flagger out with his wide receiver out wide that had a step. Uh, Trimble just is not seeing the field. As you had the numbers out there, all you had to do was put pressure on the D, tuck it. Right there, tuck it, get the first down, or at least cut it in half. Now you're fourth and seven. You knew it's four down territory anyway. Seven and a half left. This is going to be a big stop for Dwenger if they can hold them to scoreless on this drive. And that's going to be five-yard penalty on Wayne. Clock stopped at 7.33 on the flag. Trimble, 
He's got a man. And didn't have enough time to find his receiver in the backfield. Good pressure by Lay. And I believe that was Tittman. And that'll be a turnover on Downs. Good pressure in the backfield because another split second. I'm telling you what, he was wide open. Was uh, I believe that was Deontay Williams in the back of the end zone. It was a well-executed play, just not enough time for Trimble to be able to get out of his hand. The most important defensive stop is coming right now for Wayne. You give up a score here, you can pretty much say goodnight. And we still got a whole nother second half. Two in the backfield with Campbell. Two wide receiver set. Campbell in the shotgun. He's going to hand it to Trent Tittman. Tittman takes it out over the 25 yard to the 26. A little gain of six. Tittman just a very big, big back. Very strong, physical. As Teddy Steele, a nice offshoot of that. Just under seven minutes left in the quarter. Again, SummitCitySports.com. Thank you for joining us. Follow us on Twitter at 260sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell as that's going to be, I think he's lined up off sides. Yeah, the defender was lined up off sides right in front of the official. I mean, the official was three feet from him. That's going to be five yards and a first down for Dwanger. Neutral zone in Was lined up in the neutral zone. First down. Oh, little inside flick, beautiful defensive play. Great read, great strength, and really moved it down that line of scrimmage was number 70, Keaton Walker, the junior. I love how they list them, too, on the roster. They list them at 299, not 300, 299. I may know of a guy that had a hand in that. Campbell. Three wide receivers set. He's got Tipman on his right hip. Minix is your lone wide receiver to the far side. Looking to pass is Campbell. He's going to come near side. This is his strength. He's very quick. Has a man wide open and caught. That's Stellan Rustin. And Rustin will take it inside the 30-yard line for a big pitch and catch. Stellan Rustin by way of Coney Island. A little summer job for Stellan. A little inside scoop for you as he'll take that Coney dog and take it inside the 30-yard line. How about Rustin? Really good size for a tight end as Dwenger's been blessed with that over the recent years. First and 10, 5.45 left to go in the second quarter. Big pickup for the Saints. They're going to go empty backfield. Five wide receiver set. And here comes Campbell. Is this going to be a straight quarterback draw? As Davis not on the field on offense right here. Campbell. He's got a man. He's got Minix. And just over the outstretch hand for the score. 27-yard pitch and catch. Campbell to Carter Minix. Dwanger up 23-0. Campbell had all the time in the world to let that route develop. 
for Menex. Let's look at our traction AP replay. Watch, steps up, beautiful, and just over the outstretch hands of the defender and Carter Menex with the score. And a little fake trickery, and they're gonna put up two. Will the Saints, why not? 25-0. Uh, yeah, finally the signal. It's what everybody saw in the stadium. Let's take another look at that play. Campbell, let's back it up here so you can see the complete progression of Campbell stepping up in the pocket. Empty backfield, a lot expecting a quarterback draw. Two shuffles, two and a half up. Stepped in the throw, a little bit underthrown. Had all that end zone to play with, which I'm sure they're going to go over on film. But enough over the defender for the 29-yard touchdown. See that 27-yard touchdown from Campbell to Minix. 25 zip, Dwanger up five and a half minutes in this first half. Concordia absolutely rolling 19-0 over Southside. That was the biggest shock I saw all week was prognosticators taking Southside over Concordia. You now Concordia has lost a ton of talent, but they have Eli Maddox at quarterback who's a tough, tough competitor and really skilled. You know, they lost their outstanding running backs and Davis, but they bring in a Johnny Washington who's showing you right now can be an outstanding wide receiver. You have Bubba Craig, one of the best offensive linemen in the state. I mean, Concordia is going to win some games, no doubt about that. Homestead up big over Northrop, 23-0. Just under 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Leo and Kokomo still scoreless. Moran kicking off for the Saints. Moran will kick it. Nelson and Sharon back deep for the Generals. Moran, he has got a leg, son. Woo! Moran will. Send it in the back of the end zone for a touchback. He keeps kicking them like that. He keeps kicking them like that. There needs to be a little higher of somebody pick up that tee. He's too good to go get his own tee. As Jason Garrett, head coach, went out on the field to show the love for Moran. So Wayne, we'll take over. Need some positivity here. Trimble under center. Three wide receiver set. The quick one to Sharon. Sharon is pushed out of bounds by CJ Davis. Second down for Wayne. Five ten clock rolling. Twenty five zero here. Wow. Trips near side. Trimble in the shotgun. Nelson on his right hip. Looking for another quick pass, and that one may have been deflected by A.J. Lay. Whether he tipped it or not, he forced the errant pass. Will bring up third and six for Christian Trimble and Wayne. Again, great crowd on hand. Wayne, good crowd across the field as well, as well for the Wayne Generals. Even a little standing room over there as well. Love to see that. Our team has just got to battle back. Get a couple positivity plays here, positive plays. Here's Nelson. Makes the first one miss. Bounces it out wide. Cuts it back in and is punched out of bounds. 
just past the 35 yard line. Nelson is a difference maker of a back. There's no doubt about it. One of the best backs in the state. And it's got a little bit going here tonight, but it just has not been enough in this first half. Trips again, same formation. They're going to swing it here. Nelson, he cuts it back against the green. Nelson, Minix, he's going to catch him and push him out of bounds. That's twice now Carter Minix has probably saved a touchdown just with, with, his, uh, with keeping his containment on that opposite side. That one, I mean, that was destined to come this way. Nelson cut it back against the green, saw the opening. Does get a 10-yard positive play out of it. Just shows you how good he is. Uh, but Minix, I mean, that's just high IQ. You don't get caught up. Play position football. Four and a half. Trimble hands Nelson. Nelson's got a blocker out in front. And another first down pickup for Nelson. Chains will move. Nelson on the carry, minutes on the stop. Minix with another tackle. Nelson just shy of the first down marker. It's going to be about a seven-yard gainer. Four oh seven. Again, thanks for joining us here tonight, SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at two six zero Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Trimble, he's got a man wide open, two men open and just couldn't connect. As Tolls was laying on his back when that ball got to him, but that was thrown kind of right in between. Uh, Williams was out there as well. Third and three for Wayne. That's four down territory. You hand the ball twice to Nelson if you have to. Uh, but I am giving this ball to Nelson. Trimble goes under center. Young's back in there at the H-back. They do hand to Nelson. That's about the biggest no-brainer you're going to have. And he'll move the chains. 335. Pelkington with another stop. Heard that name quite a bit. Nelson on the counter, and out inside the 20-yard line. Be tackled at about the 19. I think they're going to spot it right at the 20. Gain of three. Just under three minutes. Left in the first half. And a timeout called by Wayne. Both squads with one timeout remaining. We're going to step away with them right here live from SummitCitySports.com. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game. 
the game of life. Second and seven, 251 left in the second quarter. Twin wide receivers to the far side. That's Young as the H back. I believe that's Rochford and at the running back and that is handed off to Rochford. And that's gonna be no gain. They are gonna mark him right back at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven for the Generals. Play action. Nope, that was a design keeper, and Dwanger was not fooled. Beautiful defensive play by the Saints. Lozado, Scary in the backfield. Fluger. Fourth and long, make it 11. One wide receiver set, fourth and 11, minute and a half remaining. The blitz from Lay. Trimble, just run it, tuck it and go. There you go, Christian Trimble out inside the 10 yard line, exactly what he needed to do right there. Pull the ball down, you have space, use your speed. And he will pick up the first down, first and goal for Wayne. Ball spotted at the eight yard line. First and goal for Wayne. Twenty five zero. Dwinger on top. The little flip to Sharon. And it's just not quick enough. Just too slow of getting that going. Uh, the Dwinger defense has all time in the world to react. Not calling Sharon slow, but the play development. Minute 05, clock rolling. Both squads with one timeout. Forty nine seconds. Nelson hit at the three and will be stopped shy. Uh, Forty three seconds left. They have about a two second play to clock differential on the time. Nelson, turn and hand it, third and second. You gotta go here. Well, it's four down Terry, a certain second. I see what they're doing here. Nelson, and he will bowl his way in there. I think he got in. Nope, they're gonna mark him shy. So if you're Wayne, you take a timeout with two seconds left or so. Have the last play, do not give it back to Dwenger. You don't want to take a timeout with 11 seconds left though, do you? Fourth and goal from the three-inch line. All right. So inside the one-yard line. And that will be a timeout call by Wayne. And we're going to step away just so you can take a look at our man, Bernard Pollard. 
has always been here. Um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting. And I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really it's SummitCitySports.com, 11.7 seconds left. Big, big play to end this second quarter. They're going to go jumbo here. One wide receiver out wide. Nelson in the backfield. I can't imagine anything happened but Nelson holding this ball. And they went with a sneak. Did he get in? He got in. Big time play and run. As they'll put it in the end zone for the first score of the game for Wayne. 25-6. And for the PAT. This is Rob, number 32, Robert Castro. And that one is swallowed up by the Saints. Defense at 8.9 left. 25-6, 19-point lead for the Saints. And right here, most important thing is make sure that Bishop Dwanger does not get a return. I bet they're going to put Minix and Davis back there both. Or it might be Steele and one of the, and either Minix or Davis. But a well-played game for the Saints thus far, though. And 8.9 left as the kicking squad will come out. Eight point nine, nineteen point lead, back deep. So it's gonna be Teddy Steele as your deep, deep man in the middle. Then you have C.J. Davis on this near side. And that's Brady O'Keefe, the sophomore, on the far side. Castro for the kick. And Castro with the boot, a high one. Teddy Seal's going to come up to field it at the 15-yard line. And right through the middle and is stopped at the 35. 5.6 on the clock. Let's see what Dwenger chooses to do here. And I think they're just going to kneel on it. As the Saints coaching staff up here in the booth is starting to walk away, that leads me to believe they're just going to kneel on it here. But how about this? 25-6, 25, 25 straight unanswered points by the Saints until that last touchdown run. And it looks like Campbell will kneel it. And good sportsmanship by both lines there. So that's the end of our first half. Your score, 25-6. Dwenger absolutely rolling. Let's go ahead and take a, about a six-minute break and come back with some updated scores. You're watching Indiana High School Football from SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. 
each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. And I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses the long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. I just want to be the best in basketball. So I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So. Uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels, we did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Here at Always 100, we have different things that we provide each week with our elite training, working on things that can help them get a scholarship in the future if they don't have one right now. Watch the skill development, helping kids get better, understanding what it takes to get to the next level. Catching and shooting, working on ball handling. In the last five years, we had over 200 kids just able to play basketball at some places from the NAIA, Division III, Division II, or Division I level.
Your kids grow up quick, and there's a lot to teach them. Some lessons they won't pick up in school. Some, they'll learn the hard way. But when it's time to give them the keys to their finances, we'll be there to help with their first checking account and the tools they need to make sense of their money. And even though they're off on their own, you'll be able to check in to see how they're doing. Raising your children is important, and teaching them about money is a big deal. So ProFed makes it easy. Federally insured by the NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. What's up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. SummitCitySports.com coming to you live. Right now, it's been a tremendous game for Bishop Dwinger up 25 to six over the Wayne Generals. Outstanding performance. We've seen CJ Davis, the first time he touches the ball as a Saint is an interception. The second time he touches the ball for, as a Saint, he takes it to the house from 78 yards out. What a player and display. We saw Carter Minix on the move with a big punt return, a good run. Teddy Steele out there in space as well. Sam Campbell has done a nice job with the offense. Stellan Rustin broke free for a big gainer. And then, of course, Lamarion Nelson has been Lamarion Nelson for Wayne. It's just not enough of them here early against the Saints, but down 25 6. A big hill to climb if you're head coach Sherwood Haydock. He's going to know it better than about anybody else. So their halftime scores, New Haven right now up 28-0 over Marion. That's a big statement win or a statement score there at New Haven. Concordia at halftime over Southside 26-6. Snyder and Northside. Uh, just under four minutes left to go in the second quarter. Looks like Snyder up 20 to six over Northside. 20 to six over Northside. As Snyder continues to prove they are legit as can be. Leo and Kokomo. Leo up 10-0 over Kokomo. That's late in the second quarter. Feel like we're missing one here. And Cherubusco at Columbia City. Also live on SummitCitySports.com. That's at halftime. Get you the score here. I believe it's a 7-7 tie, but I'll pull it up and see what we got here. Uh, it was Columbia City. Did they score to end the half is a question here. I think they did. Let me pull it up. Well, maybe not. Columbia City had it down within the five yard line late in that second quarter. And they did punch it in 14 7. Columbia City up right now over Busco. And Dwanger over Wayne. Carol and Lures, let's see if we can get you a score on that one here. 17 3, I'm being told. Lures on top. So Lures kicked a field goal. They went up 3 three nothing early. And it sounds like Carroll has ripped off 17 unanswered points, but we'll pull it up and, and take a peek. 14, 14 3. It's been confirmed. And what else are we missing here? Home, Homestead was up big over Northrop uh, at halftime. As we set 25-6, Dwinger on top. About seven minutes left in this halftime break. As this broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. At Parkview Sports Medicine, it's game on. We serve every level of athlete with our integrated sports medicine team including the region's only specialized athletic rehab facility. Learn more about our services by logging on to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne and a family-friendly environment at the Big Eyed Fish. Kelly Elmuda celebrating their 70th year in business. Shop all 14 locations at brands at drivekelly.com. 
Tom Seal Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They'll help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. You're invited to join ProFed Credit Union. We get to know you to better serve you. Sign up online in five minutes or stop by a branch. Join ProFed today and start owning your financial future at profedcu.org. At Out Motor Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind to the entire process from bid to build. Visit OttenWilderContracting.com. Summit Volleyball build, trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. From ages 5 to 18, our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditions, dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business, a system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit AndersonCoolHeat.com. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you? Whether it's expunging your criminal record or helping to get your driver's license reinstated, Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Sioka Cleaning and Restoration, providing top-notch commercial cleaning services, including janitorial, water damage, and state-of-the-art disinfectant services throughout Northeast Indiana. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf.edu. So our halftime score is still 25 to six, four and a half minutes about left in this break. We're gonna step away for about six minutes, catch our breath and come back to get ready for the second half of this ball game right here live from summitcitysports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today.
I just want to be the best in basketball. So I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me. So I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", 6'4", to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strength. Here at Always 100, we have different things that we provide each week with our elite training, working on things that can help them get a scholarship in the future if they don't have one right now. Watch the skill development, helping kids get better, understanding what it takes to get to the next level. Catching and shooting, working on ball handling. In the last five years, we had over 200 kids been able to play basketball at some places from the NAIA, Division III, Division II, or Division I level. Your kids grow up quick, and there's a lot to teach them. Some lessons they won't pick up in school. Some, they'll learn the hard way. But when it's time to give them the keys to their finances, we'll be there to help with their first checking account and the tools they need to make sense of their money. And even though they're off on their own, you'll be able to check in to see how they're doing. Raising your children is important, and teaching them about money is a big deal. So ProFed makes it easy. Federally insured by the NCUA, Equal Housing Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Indiana High School football fans. SummitCitySports.com coming to you live. We're about to get at half number two in this SAC opener right here between the Bishop Dwanger Saints hosting the Wayne Generals. 25 unanswered points to start the ball game for Dwanger. Answered late with the goal line touchdown by Nehemiah Young. But just not, has not been enough for Wayne to put all the drives all the way together. Lamarion Nelson, 146 yards rushing in that first half, just doing Lamarion Nelson type things. That's exactly what he does, but he can't do everything for this Wayne club. Trimble is going to have to find some wide receivers uh, down the field to open it up a little bit. Uh, if you do that, you can get back into this ball game, but it's going to start with a defensive stop right now for head coach Sherwood Haydock and his coaching staff. This is the most important stop right here to start this second half. Back deep for Dwangers, Teddy Steele in the middle, C.J. Davis, and it looks like Carter Minix. Castro with the kick. It's going to be C.J. Davis. He is a game breaker. Uh-oh, he's got a hole. What a tackle. That was a touchdown saving tackle by number 88. Check it. 99, that was number 99. Lanis Martin, the sophomore with a beautiful tackle. As CJ Davis was starting to smell end zone right there, folks. So first and 10 for Dwanger to start their first possession of the second half. Let's see what they have in store. Sam Campbell's been impressive. He's throwing the ball when he's had to. He made a nice pass to Carter Minix. Had one to Rustin. Hasn't had to throw it too much. Uh, so he'll go with the pistol. And that's a little mishap with Tipman. And I think whether it was Tipman went to the wrong hip. 
Uh, Tippman went to the wrong hip. Or if Campbell turned the wrong way, a little extracurricular there with Tippman and Young. As he's getting the scolding by the official. Campbell will make the call. Good first down play by the Wayne defense. They bring up second and 10. C.J. Davis lined up on this near side as a tight end. Watch for him. As they're going to run it with Campbell on the keeper. He's going to reverse it, come back near side. He's got a couple of blockers. Oh, how about that? Number five, Darion Alexander. That's some good strength shown right there by the junior. Didn't look like he grabbed a whole lot of them, but brought them down. Two-yard gain for Campbell. It's going to bring up third and eight. Ultra, ultra important here. Campbell breaks the center. Four wide receiver set, nothing in the backfield. Third and eight. Campbell, eight on the play clock. Here comes a blitz up the gut. Pressure, steps out of it, outstanding. That's what Bishop Dwanger's gonna need from Sam Campbell. Steps up to avoid the pressure and finds number eight, his tight end, Stellan Rustin, to move the chains. That is exactly what the Bishop, Bishop Dwanger coaching staff wants to see out of Sam Campbell. Making one miss on that defender and throwing a dime out here to Rustin. 10-10. That's been the question in the offseason. Who was going to be the Bishop Dwenger quarterback? Sam Campbell putting doubts at rest as he's going to keep that one. we got to hold, though. That's coming back. That is coming back. It's been, a, it's been a very clean game. Not a lot of hankies have been on the field. But Dwanger's going to get caught right there. Uh, that's going to back him up 10 yards from the spot. And if it goes from the spot, you're looking at first and about 19. And that is the hold. Two wide receiver set. Campbell looking to throw it for Campbell. He's holding that out there. That one is deflected. He is absolutely clobbered. He is blasted. Woo! Woo! Yeah, he is shaking up. Is Campbell? I felt that up here. That's Campbell. He's showing a real ability to get away from pressure. So he has been reading that pocket very, very well. Going back to that Minix touchdown where he stepped up, shuffled up two stops. They're going to go empty once again. Five wide receivers set. Trips far side, two to the near side. That's Steele and Davis. Blitz coming up the gut again. They're bringing five. Campbell, he's got a man wide open and went underneath. That's picked off. By number five, Darion Alexander. Alexander out over the 50 and is pushed out of bounds. What a interception. Great hands from number five, Darion Alexander. But Campbell missed a wide open wide receiver in the back of the defense. I mean, he was wide open and just missed him. Let's go back and look at it. But that was an outstanding individual play by Darion Alexander. Watch this play the route underneath but I believe that was Minix he was in the back yeah he's wide open you see his hand was up but what a play on the ball that is next level folks outstanding job by the junior Alexander he had another he had a great hit in a couple plays ago as well Wayne with a little bit of life 
He's got a man wide open. Sharon catches it and is tackled at the five. Jacob Sharon finally gets one. As Christian Tremble had two wide receivers to pick from there. Nine twenty-five left in this third quarter. Wayne on the move after the interception. Hey, 14 on the play clock. You need to hurry here. You cannot have a delay a game or burn a timeout this early. You're going to have to burn a timeout. Trimble under center. Three on the clock. He gets it off. Nelson. Makes one miss and hurdles right over Davis for the score from four yards out. Wayne back in this ball game. <coughs> Have an injured player look like for Wayne, number 45. McKe McKelly and Ragsdale. That looks to be all right. But that is it, exactly how you wanted to start the second half if you're Wayne. As Campbell just picked out the wrong wide receiver on that interception. And a flag. And a false start on Wayne. Can't get out of their own way here. We'll bring up first and goal from the nine instead of the four. Or they got it at the eight. They got it at the eight. The PAT move back. That's plenty of leg. I think that tucked in. Beautiful. How about that, number 32, Robert Castro, the junior, showing you Wayne's got a kicker to this year, folks. Cuts it to 12, does Wayne. Let's go back and give you the sequences here. Our traction AP replay. Watch a blitz come up the middle. This is the empty backfield. He had Minix wide open. Instead, decides to go in the center of the field. And just a ball hawk play by Darion Alexander with the absolute beautifully play to pick that off. Uh, and then the score. Now going back. Then the next with Trimble. Where he has a little play action. He has two wide receivers wide open. He could have picked either one of those wide receivers. A good catch from behind to stop the TD. But it didn't matter on the very next play. It was Lamarion Nelson from about four yards out as he lowers the shoulder, hurdles over one, and takes it in for the score. 25-13 is the count. Castro to kick it deep for the Generals. Back deep. Looks like you have Steele. O'Keefe is back in there now, as is C.J. Davis. And they're going to kick it right down the pipe to Steele, and he steps in the end zone, and that's an automatic touchback at Indiana High School football. So 8.59, the Wayne defense comes back on the field, and you can see they got a little bit more pep in the step. They are a little bit more confident right here. Let's see what this leads to as Bishop Dwanger has been in control all game. Let's see how they react to the interception and the subsequent score.
Campbell. He's going to go under center here. And not a lot there, maybe gain of two. Eight forty-five. Eight and a half. Clock rolling. Campbell in the shotgun. Two wide receivers set. It's going to be a keeper near side, and he's tackled by Sharon, shy of the first down markers. To bring up third. And about three. For Dwanger, near eight minutes left in this third quarter. Wayne has turned this into a ball game, going down 25-0. Now 13 unanswered for them, going back to the last of the second quarter. Campbell, three wide receiver set. Another keeper. Sharon does tackle him, but that's after about a three yard plus of the first down marker. Campbell will move the chains with the feet. Twenty-five, thirteen. Campbell in the pistol. Option. Little shovel pass underneath. He's got a blocker. Can he make a tackle out wide? What a tackle. Is that Croy Lloyd? It was Croy Lloyd with a tremendous tackle. Out in space, second and 11. There's that option, little shovel pass to the tight end, Rustin, who's coming underneath. Second 11, Dwanger being very deliberate. We're at 10 seconds on the play clock. They know you shorten this game. It's not a big time offense where they press on the run with Nelson. And we got a timeout called by head coach Jason Garrett. He did not like what he saw here. So the timeout called by the Saints. And we're going to step away real quick with them here. You're watching the Summit Athletic Conference right here, summitcitysports.com. Hello all you volleyball fans, Will Robbins here, the founder and CEO of Empowered Sports Club, the home of Empowered Volleyball Academy and Pro Beast Juniors. We just want to wish a special good luck to all of our empowered athletes and their respective high school teams and middle school teams this volleyball season. We wish you guys the best and we also wanted to let everyone else know that it's not too late to join the Empowered family. Uh, October 17th and 18th, we do have our high school prep tryout. So if you're a serious volleyball player, Empowered is the place to be. Not only have we had 100% of our athletes go on to play at the next level, we had Fort Wayne's largest recruiting class in history with 20 athletes alone last year going on to play at the next level. So when you're making your club decision for this season, we hope that you'll consider Empowered and make Empowered Sports Club your home and that you'll join the Empower family. Welcome back, second and 11, 626. Play action, play action, deflected as Campbell was drilled again, this time by Sharon. Wayne was not fooled on that at all. Third and 11, 621 remaining. Six twenty one on the clock, third and eleven.
Campbell deep, has got a man, Davis, caught it. C.J. Davis with a beautiful catch. Campbell threw it right in stride, and Dwanger with the big time score. 78 yard touchdown. Wow. Just like that, switch the momentum right back for Bishop Dwanger as Sam Campbell absolutely unleashed a dart. C.J. Davis right in stride. It doesn't get any better than that. Referee about got ran over as C.J. Davis takes it in. What a pitch and catch. Sam, Sam Campbell putting all doubters off to the side as he is playing outstandingly. 31-13, 6-10 left. Here is Moran, it's been perfect. So Moran. In for the PAT. Six ten left in the third. They have quite it as Moran kicks one towards Best Buy, and that's where we set now. Thirty two. 13, Bishop Dwanger is on top. Stepping away real quick. SummitCitySports.com. You're good at basement basketball. We are good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. High school sports fans, welcome back to game time, to pure spirits, to pure sports. Welcome back to high school sports. Fans, I'm IHSA Commissioner Paul Knighty, and I just want to say, welcome back. This is game time. This is Indiana High School Sports. This is your IHSAA. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 32-13, our score. 6-10 left in the third quarter. What an answer from the Saints after the pick from Wayne. And the subsequent score, Dwyer comes right back. Sam Campbell throws an absolute dime to C.J. Davis right in stride. Davis pulled it down and took it the rest of the way for the score. Now Moran back in to kick it off, back deep for the Generals. Is Nelson and Sharon. Here comes Moran. Thirty-two, thirteen. Moran boots another one. This one's going to be inside the ten-yard line. Nelson running start runs into his own man and then is tackled at the twenty. Is that Lozado? I believe again he's shaking up a bit. Also there was number forty-five. 
Ryan Groves. There is some, we talked about it last year with the amount of skilled players that Dwenger had. Uh, it looks more now, to be honest with you. I mean, this offense looks more explosive. Uh-oh, that's loose. Did Dwenger get it? Just a bad pitch. I think Dwenger got it. They did. Wow. That's how quickly it can turn, folks. Never had it. And Sharon couldn't grab it. Let's go to our Traction AP replay real quick. As, yeah, it's just a bad exchange. You see Trim, Trimble and Sharon. Yeah, he tried to pitch it. I don't know if Sharon was expecting an actual handoff, but that was recovered. And that was recovered by number four, Christian Lozado. So Dwenger will take over on the Wayne General 20-yard line. First and 10. Six minutes. As they're going to call that a incomplete, as that did go forward. I was thinking that, so that will be an incomplete pass. Now hand to Nelson. Nelson can't get past three Saint defenders over there on that far side. Scary. And number 44, Tribal Ware. I believe 36 was over there as well in Pelkington. That one nowhere. Five eighteen left in this third quarter. That's some new life there. Did Wayne? Oh, and that would have been a fumble. Fourth, fourth and nine, Trimble in, and he will punt it. Carter Minnick's back deep. First time he touched a punt to open up the game, he about took it to the house. Trimble had to save it on the tackle. And the White Hat wants to have a conversation. Still talking about it. I think they're satisfied now. So five and 18, fourth and nine. Trimble to punt. High kick. It's gonna bounce at the 45 yard line sideways, takes a Dwanger bounce. And then we'll be downed at the 39 yard line where Dwanger will take over. With a 19 point lead, 32, 13. So Sam Campbell has been impressive. Everyone you expected, Teddy Steele, Carter Minnick, C.J. Davis. 
Stell and Rustin. They have some playmakers out here, folks, this year. Steele has a big hole, shows the speed, cuts it against the grain, and another big one out to the 20-yard line. Teddy Steele making a move. Four forty five left in the third. Up the gut to Tipman. Tipman makes them all miss. Had a little bit of burst of speed. Smells the end zone and it's tackled inside the one yard line. Oh my goodness. Trent Tipman. My Lord, how about that? Tipman, he's going to want that back so close to putting that in the end zone. High formation, Campbell's going to go under center. Steel dots the eye. They're going to hand it to the up guy. Oh, they were trying to give it to him. They tried to get him a score. And just dropped the exchange. So that'll be a loss on the play. Second goal. Ball spotted at the three. Three twenty clock rolling. Campbell under center. It's going to hand to Tipman again, and he fumbled into the end zone. And Wayne did recover. That's going to be a touchback. And first and ten for Wayne from their own twenty. It should be. Why no signal here? The Dwanger, the Dwanger players are saying that they already cro he crossed the line of scrimmage, I believe. Nope, they're saying touchback. They are saying touchback. Let's see if we can get a look at it. Let's go to attraction AP replay. That's too quick. Slow it down here. Yeah, I, you can't really tell. Too much traffic in front of the camera there. It looked like he was short. Uh, uh, just judging. Yeah, it looks like he was short. Doesn't matter, though. As Wayne will take over, third. There's going to be first and 10, 3 left. So another momentum change. Let's see if Wayne can take advantage. Trips near side. Here comes a bliss off the edge. That's right where Nelson's going. Nelson does a little high step, takes it out about two yards shy of the first down marker. Two forty, remaining in the third. New Haven up forty-one-zero over Marion. How about that? 
making an absolute statement. Out in space. Great pursuit. Lozado has been so impressive. Number four for the Saints. Came from the other side of the field, really. Concordia still up 26-6. Looks like Jimmy Sullivan's having heck. As Jimmy Sullivan, another touchdown pass, 51 yarder to Gabe Starks. Carroll up 21 3. Nelson cuts it back. Uh oh. Lamarion Nelson. Can CJ Davis catch him? He can. Without CJ Davis, that was going to the house. Lamarion Nelson, beautiful run. And he is down. Now that ball at about the 21, 22 yard line, the huge run and gainer by Nelson. And he will hop off the field. One fifty-one left in this third quarter, which has seemed like this is taking forever. This third quarter. So 151, first and 10 for Wayne. What are we doing here? Was there a timeout? Oh, injury down here at this end. I didn't even see it. I apologize. As number 54 will come off the field with help from the training staff. That's Peter Thiel, the sophomore. Fifty-one will eventually start it. Nice catch inside the fifteen. That was a very tough catch, low from Deontay Williams. Going to be holding on Wayne. One forty four. They'll back it all the way up to the thirty five yard line. That is one heck of a penalty. So Trimble gets the call from the sideline. 15 on the play clock, plenty of time. Trips near side. It's Rochford in at tailback. He'll get the handoff. Makes the first one miss, but not the second and the third. And we got another flag. Another flag here thrown on that far side. See what the call is. Shot block on Wayne. So 
So they'll back it up even further. So since that Lamarion Nelson run, they've just gone the wrong direction. He got him there about the 21, 22 yard line. Now they're all the way back at the 46 of Dwanger. Minute and a half. Trimble, plenty of time. Now pressured, and he just can't hold it that long. That's gonna be a sack, and that's gonna be for the defensive backfield. But number 78 will get credited, Alec Bozowski. As Trimble just cannot hold it that long. Offensive line had no chance. So second and forever for Wayne. 52 seconds left. So second down, 35 seconds left in this third. And a delay a game now on Wayne. So Wayne, it'll be backed up another five yards. Second down and 50. Second and 50 to be exact. Could be a record. Rochford. As Nelson, since that big run, has not been back in the ball game. And now Rochford is down. He's up. Third down. But another flag on the play. Throw him right in the middle of the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a hold on Wayne. Why not? And I'm sure you... Take that back another 10. So ball now spotted on the 31 yard line of Wayne. It is second down. Twenty-five seconds is on the game clock, and this third quarter continues. Yeah, you, that's what I was wondering too. You're, you're, why take the yard? You decline it, give up the down. The down's more important than another ten yards. What's the difference between second and 66 or third and 56? So Trimble breaks the huddle. 25 seconds. Could be the last play of the quarter, but knowing this quarter, it will not. We got about four more left. Clock rolling. Trimble in the shotgun. Looking to throw it. Pressured from Lay. Trimble with the throw, and that one's going to be incomplete. Fourth and long for the Generals. So fourth down and as Davis will check out, as Dwenger may start going back or maybe going here to the subs deeper in their bench. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. As I believe that's Tittman is cramping up severely. So yeah, going deep into the bench here.
Trimble. Beautiful kick. Steele's going to let it bounce. It's going to take a Dwenger bounce and then down by Wayne. In Ragsdale at the 35-yard line where Dwenger will take over. First and 10 with 3.7 left in the third quarter. Up 19 in absolute control. Let's see what the Saints offense has in store. Campbell still in. Like number 13, Tobias Tittman's in at tailback. It's like Alex Tittman, the sophomore. Nope, take that back. They will hand to Tittman. How about some... Tobias Tittman is tackled and thrown out of bounds after a minimal gain and another flag. As I guarantee you, this is going to be unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, he got the face mask. Oh, I didn't see that one. So it will be a face mask penalty on Wayne to end this third quarter. I just never thought this third quarter is ever going to end. And it will be a personal foul, 15-yard penalty. That will be tacked on, and that will be the end of the third quarter. So we're going to step away. 12 more minutes of game action remaining right here live from SummitCitySports.com. Here at Always 100, we have different things that we provide each week with our elite training, working on things that can help them get a scholarship in the future if they don't have one right now. Watch the skill development, helping kids get better, understanding what it takes to get to the next level, catching and shooting, working on ball handling. In the last five years, we had over 200 kids just able to play basketball at some places from the NAIA Division III, Division II, or Division I level. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. SummitCitySports.com. Fourth quarter action is upon us. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Follow us on Twitter <clears throat> at 260 Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell to be notified of all of our live events as they happen. Bishop Dwenger fans, I'll be back here tomorrow at 12 noon. The Bishop Dwenger Lady Saints on the soccer side. We'll be taking on Northwood. That will be live at noon. Come on out to Shields Field. It's supposed to be a beautiful afternoon. That's Toby Tittman. The minimal gain. And another flag. A personal foul on Wayne. Personal foul on Dwenger. They'll offset. We'll replay. Thirty-two thirteen our score. I formation for Dwanger. Thirty-two, thirteen. now. What are we doing? Let's go. 
I'm not sure what the discussion's about. There's been several of these little powwows. Let's bring another official in here to confuse the situation even more. So 11.50 left in this ball game. As you'll see Dwenger go deep into the bench here. <coughs> One of the biggest varsity rosters that you'll see in the city. Didn't we just do this? So they're going to give us the signal for a second time just for S and G's. As we're back at it now. Campbell under center. Check it. He's in the pistol. With Tipman behind. 11.35. Campbell takes the snap. Hands Tipman. Nope. Fake. Campbell's going to keep it. And he will bounce out of bounds. And another flag. <laughs> the near sign Leiden judge called that. Let's see what the call is because the play went all the way to the opposite side of the field. If he calls a holding on a wide receiver on this side where no action is. See what the call is. Update from Leo. Kokomo putting a smack down up 13 now. 26 13 is the score. And they're going to wave the flag off. Shocker. Minute or 11 and a half, just under, left in this ball game. Campbell will come back out. <clears throat> Excuse me, Concordia up 32-12 with 10 minutes remaining. Over south side. Eleven and a half left. Campbell and the pistol. Toby Tittman behind. As they're letting the play clock run down. Where it's at seven. Good job by Campbell. Good senior leadership. Tittman making people miss in the hole. Okay. And good sportsmanship shown there by number 73 for Dwenger. John Paul Henry helping a defender up. Under 11 minutes. Campbell. Stops. Oh, wow, that was crafty. Looking downfield, little high step, throws it against the grain and smartly throws it away. So Zion, or excuse me. New Haven absolutely making a statement against Marion, winning 41 to zero. Love to see what Mylon Graham's numbers were. Top 100 player in the junior class in the country. But Northside, right now, they're down by eight. As the third quarter starting to wind down, they are in the red zone. Campbell. Quick out to Davis. C.J. Davis, quick stutter step, makes it out in a fumble. 
And that trickled all the way over to a Bishop Dwinger Saint player. That is just unlucky if you're Wayne. Gosh. So 10 0 6. First and 10 for the Saints. They spread it out with Campbell. The little hitch over here to Davis. Uh, and they'll gain about five, six yards. So Northside did score. They missed the two point conversion. So Snyder up 20 to 18 over Northside with 11.50 left to go in that ball game. And we have a flag on the play. I believe this is coming back, folks. Holding on the Saints. It's coming back. So off the ensuing kickoff there, Snyder takes it out over midfield. They got the ball on the 49-yard line of Northside with 11.43 left. You can watch that on SummitCitySports.com. New Haven's at a finish. Kokomo and Leo still going at it. Concordia and Southside still in progress. So Campbell has been ultra impressive. Had that one mistake of throwing to just run to the, you know, made the wrong decision, throwing it across the middle uh, when didn't need to. Here's a quarterback draw. Campbell tries to spin out of traffic. Will gain some back, maybe about five, six yards back of that penalty. Nine and a half left. Empty backfield once again. Campbell looking to throw. Finds Minix. Or is that Davis? That is Davis. Did he change his cleats? Nope, just had a glare. So Davis, he's shaking up a little bit. But 8-4, you're up 19. Getting starters out here, especially somebody as important as C.J. Davis. The C.J. Davis transfer has opened up things here at Bishop Dwanger, no doubt about it. So it looks like we'll redo it. Take two. Campbell's going to come to the sideline to get the call. Eight twenty four, second and nine for the Saints. Four wide receiver set, trips near side. Toby Tippman in the backfield with Campbell. And a timeout called by Wayne. As they need to talk about it momentarily, we're going to step away as well right here live from Summit City Sports. Dot com.
Hello all you volleyball fans, Will Robbins here, the founder and CEO of Empowered Sports Club, the home of Empowered Volleyball Academy and Pro Beast Juniors. We just want to wish a special good luck to all of our empowered athletes and their respective high school teams and middle school teams this volleyball season. We wish you guys the best and we also wanted to let everyone else know that it's not too late to join the Empowered family. Uh, October 17th and 18th, we do have our high school prep tryout. So if you're a serious volleyball player, Empowered is the place to be. Not only have we had 100% of our athletes go on to play at the next level, we had Fort Wayne's largest recruiting class in history with 20 athletes alone last year going on to play at the next level. So when you're making your club decision for this season, we hope that you'll consider Empowered and make Empower Sports Club your home and that you'll join the Empower family. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better, um, you know. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second nine, Campbell in the pistol. He's going to hand off, and he is smoked right away. That was Teddy Steele absolutely drilled. That was third and two. Oh, excuse me, that was fourth and two. Hello, put it, get it together here. So Wayne will take over. 8.09 left in the game. Ball is spotted at the 11, I believe. 10 minutes left at Spooler, Snyder 20, north side 18. Update from Spooler, Snyder up 20, 18 over Northside. Northside moving the ball though with 10.40 left. As the transfer quarterback from Dwanger over there at Northside and Bodie Dickerson. And once he transferred, Dwanger was not sure who the quarterback was be. And Sam Campbell has fit in beautifully. That one across the middle, tough pass, great catch. My number three, Keyshawn Tolls. That might be his first catch of the game. Just not a lot of opportunity for Tolls. Dwenger fans starting to foul out a little bit, trying to beat the traffic. Not the easiest campus to get out of after a football game. 7.48, clock rolling, Trimble in the shotgun. Trimble rolls near side, has a man, and is pushed out of bounds. Uh, Nehemiah Young, He's just, a, he's just an outstanding high school football player, isn't it? Nehemiah Young, he's been doing it so long. Four-year player here for the Wayne Generals. Seven and a half remaining. Three wide receivers set. They're going to stack them near side. Trimble. And Lamarion Nelson still has not been back in the game. Trimble is going to try to get away from A.J. Lay. Nope. And A.J. Lay is going to get caught with a tripping. A.J. Lay tried a little jiu-jitsu, tried to sweep the leg. A little karate kid, Johnny style. And he's going to get hit with a personal, I believe, on that. Yep. Oh, that was a face mask. So Lay got the hand up too high. Personally, I like the. The sweep. So the clean half we saw in the first half. Boy, is that change here in the second where we have seen a ton of penalties. Seven and a half. 19 point lead. So Snyder took over on downs. And that will be incomplete. So 
For the ball at the 49, second and 10 for the Generals. Snyder and Northside still locked in a good one, 2018. Snyder on top, about nine and a half minutes left to go in that game. Trimble in the shotgun. Dwanger still with their first team defense in the field. Trimble has got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. And just cannot let loose. As that was number 48, Franklin Bader. And number 36, Robert Pelkington. On the pursuit. 7.09 left. Clock stopped on the out of bounds. Student section giving Bader a little bit of love. Three wide receiver set for the Generals. And a flag. Delay a game. I cannot believe this still happens on a regular basis. Next week, Dwenger has got a big one. They're at Chambers Field against Northside. Depending on how this Snyder-Northside game shakes out, that could be a real linchpin to see who wins the SAC. Also next week, Wayne will host Bishop Lewers, who's getting smacked right now by Carroll as Lay couldn't get there. Flicks it out there to Sharon. Sharon makes one miss, and then is tackled near the original line of scrimmage. He was absolutely blasted by number 64, Ethan Fluger. Also next week, Snyder will be at Carroll. Southside at Northrop and Homestead. We'll head to Zollner to take on Concordia. So just looking at that schedule next week in the SAC, we'll be live at Northside for Bishop Dwinger at Northside. We'll be live for Lures at Wayne. We'll be live for Southside at Northrop. And we'll also be live Homestead at Concordia. We'll see where New Haven and Leo is at as well. 32-13. First, excuse me, fourth and 10. 6.37 left. Generals with, with possession. Dwinger fans, make sure you join us 12 p.m. tomorrow as the Bishop Dwinger Lady Saints will host the Northwood Panther, Lady Panthers, tomorrow, 12 noon, right here on this same field. Nice bounce here for Wayne off the punt and is downed inside the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Saints. Let's see who they bring out on offense. They're going to, to their second string, it looks like. And it will be number 16, Braxton Burmese, the sophomore backup quarterback, to lead his club out on to finish this ball game. 6-16 left. In the backfield is Teddy Steele. The handoff to Steele, and up the middle is tackled. Teddy Steele on the carry, brought down by Gary Alexander. Just under six minutes left in the ball game. Dwinger got out on fire, 25 straight points. 
Then Wayne ripped off 13 straight points. Finished by that final touchdown from Dwanger early in the third quarter. That's where we sit now, 32-13. The handoff. Uh-oh, Toby. Toby Tipman cuts it back out. Over the 35 to the 50. Cuts it back inside and stays in bounds. Toby Tipman, my new favorite player for staying in bounds. Beautiful. Keep the clock rolling. Burmese in the shotgun, empty backfield. Burmese looking to throw, plenty of time, and that pass is high intended for number 80. What is that? Number 94 is Connor Wright, the sophomore. Back to Spooler Stadium. Snyder still up 2018. They could not convert. They give the ball back to Northside. Northside with possession, down two with seven minutes left. Ball on their own 40. 5.15 here, second and 10 for Dwanger. Burmese in the shotgun with Tipman on his left hip. Tipman will take the handoff. Toby Tipman very slithery in the backfield. Got good length. And number 30, the junior, Dominic Yenko, checks in. Third and eight. Excuse me, third and two for the Saints. Burmese going to go under shotgun here. There's an I formation. The handoff to Tipman. And we have a flag. That will back him up 10 yards from the spot. So they will back him up here. 10 yard penalty from the spot. Burmese in the shotgun, empty backfield. He's looking to throw. Has a man on a little out on this near side. Caught and pushed out of bounds. Nice little pitch and catch. That one was Dominic Yenko with the reception. 406. Burmese back with an empty backfield. Keeper. Burmese, nice little burst of speed and is swung down at the 15 yard line. To move the chains. Nothing there. Walton with the stop. Burmese. Under center, I formation. And Toby Tittman's going to fall out of his stance. That's going to be a five yard penalty on the false start. 
bring up second and 15 for the Saints. And will be the call. Backs him up. Burmese. It's the call from the sideline. So big matchup next week. No matter the outcome of the Snyder Northside game, Dwanger and Northside will lock at it next week. And we'll be live on SummitCitySports.com. I'm sure the game of the week. And the run here from number 39, Quinn Grant, the senior. Quinn Grant on the carry. As this, if you're a Bishop Dwenger running back, you are hovering around the coaching staff right now. Get me a touch, coach. I'm about to run down there myself. <laughs> Game would be over by the time I got down there. There's Burmese. Let's see if they get the senior Grant another carry. He dots the eye. They do. Nope, play action. Burmese, man-to-man -man coverage. And the reception, that's number 84, Caleb Lehrman out of St. Charles Borromeo. That'll bring up fourth down, and the kicking unit will come in for the Saints. Moran. And that's not a good sign. We have someone in some need of an ambulance. A paramedic has just pulled in on the north side of the field. And that field goal is good by Moran to go 35-13. Is our score. As we have an ambulance here on the track right below us. Helping someone right down below. And now the students trying to, they're huddling around. I don't know if it's, it's where the cheerleaders are. Uh, hopefully everything's okay, nothing too serious. As the trainer now having a word with head coach Jason Garrett of Bishop Dwanger because it's quite a commotion here, obviously, on this near side. Just can't see. But either way, Dwanger, big win here tonight against Wayne to start the season, move to 1-0. and Does not matter, just got to get the wins. It doesn't matter how it looks, how it feels. Just getting the win is all that matters. As there will be a kickoff here with Moran. So here is Moran to boot it. And Moran, I'm telling you what, he's going to be one of the best kickers you're going to see all year here in the city of Fort Wayne. As his boot is tremendous. 144 left in this ball game. And yes, it is unfortunate. There's a Bishop Dwanger cheerleader that is needing some medical attention. So thoughts and prayers, of course, with her. Don't know if someone fell off a 
off a lift or, or what happened. Well, 144 here remaining in this game. Got to give it up to Sam Campbell stepping in at quarterback. The late transfer from Bodie Dickerson. Oh, good play out wide. Number 43 to bat it down. That's Luke Harbour, the junior. Getting some reps here in the varsity. And number 34, Kyle Eddie's going to check out. He's got some blood. Yeah, we got bloody nose. One thirty-nine. Left in this game. Comes out of bounds. One thirty-three left. Taking a look over at Spooler Stadium, which you can watch the rest of that game on SummitCitySports.com. Snyder still up 20 to 18, 513 left. They have the ball at their own 48 yard line. It's gonna be about second and three or so for the Panthers. Bishop Dwanger, cheerleader, unfortunately, something where she is in an ambulance. So thoughts and prayers, of course, with them. Hopefully it's just some dehydration or something. No, we won't speculate. 22-point lead for the Saints after that Moran field goal. Wayne and Trimble, he's going to go under center. Oh, and the sack right into the defender in the defensive end. I think that was number 90. It was number 90, Thomas Pori, the sophomore. How about that? Getting a rep in varsity as a sophomore and getting a sack. Come on. That is awesome. You can see how pumped he was as well. That is high school football at its finest right there, folks. 42 seconds. They go out wide. His knees are down. So that will be an immediate reception. Twenty seconds. Last play of the ball game coming. Going deep. And overthrown. And that's where we will end it. Dwanger will move to one and zero. Oh. Beating Wayne 35-13 to open the SAC Conference play. Parkview Sports Medicine player of the game. Let's give it to Sam Campbell. Stepping up big time for Campbell in his first start of his, of his senior year. And they will win it 35-13 over the Wayne Generals. Well, thanks for joining us here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back at it next week. For you Dwenger fans, you can join me tomorrow at 12 noon for the Laney, Lady Saints taking on the Northwood Lady Panthers. Some, some girls soccer right here on this same field. Until then, for Joe Hacker, I am Tim Atkinson. You have been watching 
Indiana High School football right here from SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November. In addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. I just want to be the best in basketball so uh, I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going and so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas so I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25 inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well and that's where we started. So we started the foundation um, building her base and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels, we did all the basics and she got really, really good at them and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence wise, the strength wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being 6'3", 6'4", to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Here at Always 100, we have different things that we provide each week with our elite training, working on things that can help them get a scholarship in the future if they don't have one right now. Watch the skill development, helping kids get better, understanding what it takes to get to the next level. Catching and shooting, working on ball handling. In the last five years, we had over 200 kids just able to play basketball at some places from the NAIA, Division III, Division II, or Division I level. 